Hello everybody, Jim Mandelbaum here today, another Gigamon Basics, upgrading your appliance via the command line. Now you have two ways that you can upgrade, one via the graphical interface in your browser and the other via the command line. Now one thing to remember is you can only use the graphical interface up to version 5.9. When you get to version 5.10 and higher, the image gets larger and therefore it times out in the browser. So you'll want to use the command line when you get to 5.10 and higher. The agenda, we're going to determine the current version. We're going to look at and review the steps to get to the desired version. Sometimes there are incremental steps you need to take, actually most times. We're going to download the required version from the community page. We're going to install the update and do a reboot and verify. To determine the current version, the first thing you'll do is SSH into the appliance or directly through the monitor port, which is what I'll be doing. We can log into it and you'll type the commands enable, configure terminal, show version. And that's what this looks like right here. You can see that I'm logging in as admin. I then enable, configure terminal, show version. So what we can see is 5.705 is what we're currently running. You can take a look at the build, the date, everything about it. You can see your U-boot version. Sometimes support will ask you to update your boot. And then you can see we're looking at a GigaView HC2 and information on the appliance itself. So showing version gives us a lot of information beyond just what operating system is running. We know we're on 5.7 today. And if we look at this chart, you can see along the first column from version and what you're trying to go to. The first row is your HC3 and TA, HC1, and followed by HC2. In our current version, we're on 5.7. HC2, and this is the third column. And the upgrade path is 57, specifically to 590103, then 510, then 511. Now, in our demo today, I'm just going to be going to 58 just so I can demonstrate the process. But if I did want to go to 510, I would need to make that incremental update to 590103, which has some updates in it. You'll see that's a thread where we do some database conversions. But that's not really relevant other than the fact that you know you need to do those incremental steps. So always refer to this chart as you do the update. To get the file that we're going to update to, you'll want to go to the community page and sign up if you haven't already. Click on login in the upper right hand corner. It'll prompt you to log in. You'll go under the more pull down tab, software and docs. And then you can filter on the left here. You can see that I've got it filtered HC2, and I chose 5.7 just for the screenshot, which is 5.705 is what I upgraded to when I did the last video. So I just narrowed it down. So in this case, I would have typed in 5.8, and I would have got the 5.8 download, which is what we're going to be doing. The file you're looking for is an image file, and long-term stable is always where we want to be. Long-term support is available on this. So to, to download it, you'll just click on the file you want to download. You'll be prompted with the EULA, which, of course, we're all going to read in detail. We're going to click on I agree and click accept. I know none of us read the EULA, but it's there. The other thing I would always recommend is download the release notes. As you download the release notes, there's a lot of information in there. Most importantly, what I'm looking for is I want to know what's been fixed in this update. And I want to know what known issues remain in this release. The other thing is, is that there are always deprecation announcements. So what did they get rid of? Make sure that none of those apply to anything I'm using. There is installation and upgrade instructions in there that have a little bit of what I'm going to show you. There is an actual document on upgrading your appliance. You can always go download from the community as well. This video makes it easier, of course. And then there's some licensing changes that happen in 5.7. And then this is when we released the second gen of our Gigasmart module. So the first time this module was supported is in 5.7. When we do the upgrade, it's a pretty simple process. Let's kind of walk through it first, and then I'm going to actually do it live. So we SSH the appliance, or in my case, I'm just direct con connecting to the monitor port. You'll log in, you'll enable configure terminal. And before we start, I always do a write memory, and the reason for that is, is a lot of times we make changes and we forget to save them. So I always say start with a write mem, that way you know you've got it good to go. I want to know what images are on the box today, so I'll do a show images. 
You can only have a maximum of three images stored on the box. However, as we've evolved and gotten more feature rich, we really don't want to keep anything that you're not actively using. Now, if you think you might need to roll back, of course, keep that prior version. At a certain point, though, there is no rollback, and that'll be in the readmes. So you'll need to take a look at that. And then to get rid of it, it's a simple command, image delete, followed by the file name. So we'll want to clean up, and we'll do that in our example today. Once you've done that, now you'll need to retrieve the image via the command line. And so you can do it via SCP or TFTP. If you need to have usernames and passwords, you can do that, of course. And then we'll install the image. We'll tell it the next time it boots to use this new image. Again, one last time, we'll write memory now that we've got the new image up there. And then we'll reload, which will now take the new image into account. So why don't we go ahead and do it in real time? And here we are. I am logged in to an HC2. And I'm going to go ahead and do an enable and a configure terminal. And the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is do a write memory. I don't want to do anything until I've saved what I've got. So I'm going to do a show images. And you can see that I have two images here. The first one is partition one has 5705, partition two, 570203. The last boot image was number one, and it's currently set to boot number one, which is 5705, which is what's running. I don't need this 5702. So the images here, you can see the file name right here is 570203, and that is the file I'm going to want to get rid of. So as I come down here, I'm going to do an image delete, and the file name is hc2 underscore 570203.img. All right, that image is now gone. So if I do a show images again, you'll see that the only image available to be installed is the original 5705, which is what we're running. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get from my TFTP server the new file. So it's going to be an image fetch, and it is going to be TFTP 192.168.0, in my case, 62. Now, of course, you'll put in your valid IP address or DNS fully qualified domain name of your TFTP server or your SCP server. And the file name that I'm going to grab is hc2 underscore 5802.img. And you'll notice that it's going to start downloading. Now, this can take some time. TFTP is not the fastest protocol in the world. So we're going to just let this guy go. And I'm going to pause, and we'll come back when it's done. Once the file is completed downloading, we now need to take and install the image into the build. So we're going to say image install, followed by the file name, hc2 underscore 5802.img. We're going to put pause on this. It takes probably a five minutes, so there's no reason to keep the video going. So we'll pause and come back when it's finished. The image has been verified. It's been uncompressed. It's created the file systems and it's extracted the image into those file systems. We're now ready to tell it that we want it to boot this new image the next time. So we're going to go ahead and say image boot next and we've now sh told it that we want to use that one so if we do a show images again what will change is that the partition one which was 5705 and we loaded into partition 2 5802 that we know we booted off partition one the last time but the next time it's going to now boot off of partition two which is the one we just loaded. Now, one of the nice things is we still have those images here. You can always revert back if we want to. And the setting for fallback reboot on failure is set that if it fails to upgrade, 
into the new version, it will reboot again back into the old version. So it doesn't lock you out. The default is yes, you can change that. I would not encourage to do that without support telling you to do that. Once we're ready to go, again, I'm always going to do my write mem command again, and I'm going to do a reload. Now we're going to have to confirm with a yes, and it's going to do a shutdown and a reboot. That's all it takes to do your upgrade via the command line. I want to thank you as always for watching this video. I encourage you to get connected through the community, community.gigamon.com. Sign up, get involved, and follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much.